So another short little video about uh, setting up your connecting rods and checking clearances on your crankshaft. So this is the, uh, the just the factory LS crank, 6.0 liter. So it's uh, 3.622 stroke. So I got the rods and the uh, pistons assembled and I actually gapped the rings. Um, I'll, sh I'll tell you about the gapping of the rings in the next scene when I can show you exactly what I did and how big they were and stuff like that. Um, so anyways, here's the pistons. K1 pistons, DSS rods. I got all the rings gapped and they're all installed. So they're actually a really nice, uh, really nice rod. Uh, full floating. We got two circlips per side. Those are in. And again, the rings are in. So. The K1 pistons forged, they're forged pistons and forged rods, and uh, so they were heavier than the factory assembly. So I'll just show you quickly here. Factory assembly, so we got about 1301 grams. That's the factory assembly, that's the piston, hyperutectic, powdered metal rod, and the bearings in there. So just remember that number, 1302. So if we take the fact uh, an after the aftermarket system, 1284, we'll put the bearing on. So about 25 grams heavier. So that's the K1 rod and the DSS piston with the rings installed on the bearing. So that whole, whole assembly is about 25 grams heavier. So basically, we had to balance the whole rotating assembly. And since the aftermarket rods and pistons were heavier than the factory, pistons and rods. We actually had to add heavy metal to this crank. So as you can see here, so that's that's a tungsten slug right there. That's twice as heavy as steel. So we got one there and that throw and then we got another one and this throw here. So because again the pistons and rods were heavier we had to uh, we had to add some steel to this crank. This is a factory crank so it's it's pretty expensive to do it this way. I spent about twelve hundred and actually eleven fifty to do this. But if you get an, a, a forge crank, well, it's twice the cost, and you still got to balance it. So this is cheaper, even though the forge crank is stronger. So uh, you know, I figured uh, it's kind of somewhat of a budget build, but uh, we want to try to save wherever we can, so we can put that that money. We can put that money into other other parts of the build, such as uh, an ECU. Holly X Max would be the one I want to use. So, anyways, so in this video, I also want to show you. We'll uh, yeah, we'll put the bearing in, and then we'll we'll check the uh, check what our clearances are. So, anyways, so with these with these K1 rods, the procedure here is uh, figure out the length of your your bolt size. So this is the seven sixteenths bolt size measured under the head. I believe this is 1.4. Go like that. So let's see. Yep. Yep. It's 1.4. So the 1.4 line says uh, if you use a, a, stretch, a stretch gauge you can go 0 0.0045 to 0 0.005 but we're going to use the torque and angle method. So we're going to first tighten it down to 30 foot-pounds and then another 50 degrees with the uh, with the wheel. Not wheel, I mean angle finder. <laughs> so anyway, so next scene I'll show, I'll put the camera on top of my head and my holder and I'll show you exactly how to do that. Okay, so, uh, oh yeah, one more thing. Uh, this is number one, piston and rod right here. So what happened when I, I actually tried to fit it in the uh, cylinder and I used uh, my, uh, my ring compressor here. So actually, it was, I didn't lubricate it, so it was, uh, that's another good tip. Just if you want to lubricate this and make sure it's not too, not the actual right size of the bore. So anyway, so I didn't lubricate it and it got caught up and it broke the, the top ring, or the first ring. So we're just using the factory chrome one, which should be fine, because like I said, uh, we're going to throw a lot of boost to nitrous. So we got big gap. I used the factory one, the old one, so it had a lot of gap in it, 34 thou. But I'll talk about that when I talk about the gapping in the next scene. So anyway, so what we're going to do here... Hope you guys can see this. So again, 
measure our, our bolt. This one's 1.4. We go to the the chart here. 7 16 by 1.4. So we want 30 foot pounds plus 50 degrees. So what we'll do is we'll take this off here. Pretty tight actually. Like that. We get our bearing. Oh, yeah, and these are standard bearings. So these are the old, uh, these are the ones from the engine. I'm just reusing them. They're in, they're in good shape, so why spend $200? Put that in there. Like so put this guy in. Like so that there like that. Grab our little mallet. Make sure it's seated. Now they gave me some lube that they specified to use. So it's, I should have probably got this beforehand, but let's see. Here it is right here. Okay, so we're going to uh, torque these things down as per our instructions here. We're using the torque and angle method. So 30 foot pounds plus 50 degrees of rotation. This wrench is already set to 30. There's 30. 30. Turning, let's see, let's just get this thing. Set this up to zero here. I want the zero to be like right so you guys can see it. Yeah, so we're gonna go zero, we're gonna go to 50 degrees. Let's see how this works here. Make sure all the backlash is out. It's actually going to probably take a little bit of, yeah, 50 degrees is right, so we want to go right here. There we go, that's 50 degrees. So now we'll do the other side. Not there. Get all the lash out. So we'll put the needle where you guys can see it. So if we go to 270, right there. So we're gonna have to go to 310, 320. So just right here. So just 10 degrees below the 330. Okay, so another 50 degrees on this guy. There 
here we go. That's it. So now we're going to measure the ID of our rod journal bearing after we've torqued these uh, fasteners to spec. Let's see what we get here. It's about 2.102. Let's just verify with this vernier. So let's see if we get about the same. Yep. 2.102. And then we'll measure our crank journal. And we're getting a 2.0994, 2.0995. I think it might be hard for you guys to see this, but anyway, so we got uh, 102 to 995. So that's about two and a half thou, two and a half thou clearance on the uh, rod journal. So that's actually good. I think the spec is two and a half to three. So it's it's close, but uh, should be okay. So I just wanted to try something here. So we measured our, our K1 uh, rod journal diameter after they have been torqued. So here's the factory uh, rod and piston. So all we'll do is we'll torque these to about 50 and then we'll double see how big our, clear, our bore is, okay? So I'm using that 50 foot pound because that's the generally accepted torque on these guys without using a, an angle gauge. As per Sloppy, our good friend Sloppy Mechanic. So he goes 51, I think, so we'll just go 50. See what happens. There we go, 50. 50. So now we'll check the bore on this and see. We should see. Let's see, this one's actually even tighter. Just double check with this. Yeah, see this is tighter. Oh, it's about two also, 102. So that's good. Yep. Yeah, one and two, yeah, two and a half, about the same. 102, yep. Yeah. It's about the same. So that's a good verification. So I think we're okay on the uh, on the clearances on our rod rods, our aftermarket ones. So I just wanted to talk about the uh, the ring gaps on this on these pistons. Uh, so basically, I wrote everything down uh, again. As you guys know, I broke the first ring on piston number one, so I just used the factory stock chrome ring. Uh, I just I didn't even grind it because it already had a 34 thou gap in it so it's a little bit excessive but it should be fine and I didn't feel like buying another set of rings for $200 so we should be okay so again top ring here I'll just go over it real quick top ring was 34 that's the chrome one the factory the stock one I used um, second ring was uh, 29 thou number two piston uh, top ring was uh, 28 so we're going basically four times seven thou per per inch of bore uh, this one was 33 because I kind of screwed up on the grinding so anyways no big deal so I'm not too worried about it so a little bit big but again not too worried about it and then third ring 29 30 fourth again I kind of screwed up on this guy too because I'm just I was using the uh, ring grinder grown a little bit too much this one came up to 34 and 30 top ring was 34 again second ring was 30 thou and then from number, number five through number eight, we got 28 for the top one and 30 for, for the second ring. So pretty good. Um, measured the pistons out at, uh, here we go, uh, 
Um, number two was at 3.9948, number three, 3.9945, number four, 3.9953, uh, five, 3.9943, this one was 48, this one was 45, number eight was 48. So pretty close to, let's just round it up to 4.995, which is fine. So on the bore diameter, 4, 4 .0015, 17, 12. So let's just let's just call it uh, 4.02. So 95 to 2 is 7 thou, and if you look at the the books and do all the, and go all through all the literature, you want about 7 thou to 6 thou clearance on a on a on a turbo engine, anyways. So that's our running clearance between piston and cylinder bore is about 6 to 7 thou, which is good. Uh, let's just uh, give you a couple of pictures here of, let's see if this will work, uh, hang on a sec here, yeah, here, actually here's a picture of the piston, and close up view of the circlips, there's two per side, so again these are DSS pistons, two circlips per side, full floating, no I don't want that, I want to go this way, <laughs> actually hang on, so yeah, full floating, and here's a picture of uh, the feeler the feeler gauge in there, and this was 25, and then we have a 2,000 and a 3,000 behind that, so that's 30 for the second ring. And I and the, again these are down about one inch into the bore, and that's where you want to measure it because that's where the most heat is. So you got to make sure your your rings are big enough at the top of the bore versus the middle or the bottom. So the most heat's up here, so that's where there's going to be the maximum expansion of the piston ring and potential for butting up and then causing uh, engine damage. So again let's go just go quickly here. Uh, here's the pistons. I ordered them from Summit Racing. Canadian 639.25 for those guys who live in Canada. So these are DSS SX series forged pistons, 4 inch bore, uh, Let's see, compression height is 1.305, piston head volume, it's got, well the valve reliefs it's 5cc so you can do your your static compression uh, calculation with that. Uh, pin diameter 927, so again, yeah so these are good, high caliber CNC blah blah blah, forged pistons are more, yeah so they're pretty good, everything's good. Um, got some good reviews. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're gonna have to use a 6.125 rod with this because the compression height is 1.305. So if you're gonna get these pistons, uh, that's what you gotta get. So if I just go back here and I'll show you about the rods here. These are the rods I ordered. So again, K1 Technologies H beam connecting rod, 821 Canadian, 6.215 inch center to center, 4340 steel, shot peened. And these come with the ARP 2000 alloy bolts. So sometimes you buy rods and they don't have the, the good bolts, they just have the 180,000 PSI bolts. So it's cheaper to get these with the good bolts already. And here's your weight. Uh, rod journal diameter 2.1. Yeah, here's the, uh, what are the advertised horsepower rating on these? Uh, I rate it to handle up to 1500 horsepower, so that's pretty good. Oh yeah, here's the ring set too, just uh, just for your information. We just got we just got the seal power plasma molly piston ring set, ninety one dollars Canadian, so about a hundred bucks. I think I said it was about two. No, that was the bearing. So, anyways, yeah, hundred dollars for these. So yeah, so there's the rings. Uh, rods and pistons that I put into this, uh, are going to put into this build. So there we go with the uh, rod bolt tightening procedure using the angle gauge and our torque wrench. So we've checked the uh, the bore of the rod journal and it came out to 2.102 um, 
the crank journal diameter was uh, 2.0995 or 2.0994. So we're at about two and a half thou clearance, which I think is good. So we'll uh, continue on, and when we put the crank in the uh, the block over there, I'll show you how to test that for proper rotation, and also make sure it's not bent. And then we'll get the crank in there, torque everything down, and rotate it again, and see if there's a, a deviation or see if there's any more resistance than there should be. So uh, we'll do that once uh, we go further in this project. But uh, for now, uh, thanks for watching.